Welcome back, I'm Chris Moore with HVAC Pro Blog, and this week we're gonna to touch on winter humidification, not just how it impacts comfort, but also the indirect health effects in a home. Did you know that there's supposed to be a certain humidity setting based on the outdoor temperature? We're gonna to touch on that and how to size a humidifier and the most common types of whole home humidifiers on the market today. Without further ado, here's the training. So let's talk about humidification now. We talked about cleaning the air, now let's talk about why we want to humidify the air. Look, we have this huge span of what's comfortable. 30 to 60% is comfortable in the winter time, but we don't want to be at the extremes. We want to be right in the middle, somewhere around 30, 35%. And here's why. You can see this came right out of um, the environmental health perspective. I read that every day. So uh, this is one of those things that you, gets passed around a lot of times particularly in uh, home presentations, so that way you understand why you actually have to install a humidifier in the wintertime. It's not just about comfort, it's also about what grows when it's really dry or really humid. So take a look, bacteria and viruses, not so good if it's actually too low, below 40%, right? The optimum zone is 40 to 60. I really don't typically see anybody go more than 35%, but this is makes a great case for 40%. Um, fungus and mites, that's on the high end. It's got to be really humid. Of course, respiratory infections and asthma, and if it's, a, if it's too dry, those, that really affects your respiratory infection and respiratory issues. Um, if it's really humid, that could really impact rhinitis and, and, and asthma on both sides. Now, ozone production is only when it's really dry. That's when you start to like scorch the air, right? So that's why those some of those old electronic air cleaners that um, just had those wires and they zapped the air, that's why they were adding ozone to the air because it was really drying it out. Um, if we were to humidify the air and we stay within 40 to 60% across the entire year, so not just the winter time, but notice 50% relative humidity in the summertime also is the best for comfort and for uh, viruses and fungus and bacteria and mold and all that stuff. We can avoid all of it if we control humidity in the home. So you can see here, outdoor temperature and recommended indoor settings. This is right out of the April Air installation manual. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people are not going downstairs and adjusting their relative humidity setting based on the outdoor temperature because the outdoor temperature changes every day. So it can change drastically in New England, right? If you don't like the weather, just blink and it's gonna change. So um, if it's zero degrees, you'll notice we want about 25% relative humidity. If it's warmer out, there's more moisture in the air, so we actually have to humidify inside more. So the relative humidity goes up as far as your setting goes. Now there are a lot of automated controls. I highly recommend if you're doing something these days, you install the automated versions. Don't just set it and forget it. If you do set it and leave it and you have to pick one, I'd pick something closer to design temperature. So maybe 30% relative humidity, somewhere in that range for most of New England. Um, if it gets colder, you're gonna wanna turn it down. Otherwise, you're gonna add too much moisture to the air and you're gonna see it start to form on the inside of your windows and windowsills. If you see that moisture start to form, that means you have your relative humidity too high and you need to turn it down, okay? And that typically happens when it's really cold out. So you can see here, sizing humidifiers, there's actually a science to it, right? Depending on the tightness of the home, how much square foot you have, it'll actually tell you how much moisture you need to add, how many gallons that need to go in there per day. And you have to accommodate for the number of gallons a family of four already add per day through everyday activities, just like breathing and sleeping and washing and bathing and cooking, right? So we as a family of four, I only have three in my house, so we just count as four, um, we'll add two gallons a day already. And you can see a house might need as in this example, an average home that's 2,000 square feet would need 17 gallons per day. Minus two gallons for the people, we end up needing 15 gallons per day. And we're gonna pick a model that will give me at least that capacity or more, and I can control it with a, a humidistat, right? So we never wanna put in something that's not gonna give us enough, obviously. Now, there are multiple different versions of what you can hook up to a, um, a furnace or a forced air system, right? So really important, you have to go based on what the healthiest is, um, what you can install in that duct system, right? Because sometimes you're limited by space in the mechanical room or lack thereof. So I see a lot of people these days opt for a steam humidifier, which is very effective. It adds warm steam, but the maintenance costs are a little bit higher on those, but we can control them a lot easier. 
heated pan humidifiers. I hope anytime you guys are seeing this, you're ripping them out. These need the most maintenance and it's the most likely to cause a lot of mold and possible Legionnaire's disease and stuff like that because you have standing water that just gets heated and heated and all that stuff starts to come out of the water and can easily go into the air. So really, really important. Those get maintained every single season. And if you're doing that, you're wearing gloves because it's really easy to have a nick or something in your fingers and get that right into your bloodstream. So really important you wear gloves when you when you maintain that thing. Um, atomizing, I had never always seemed to have problems with these. Um, when I was doing maintenance, I always had problems with atomizing uh, water, mainly because the homeowners weren't replacing the filter for the water as often as needed. And any of that sediment would get right into the nozzle at the end of that mister, and it would just start to squirt out instead of actually atomizing the water into the air. And I would get uh, flooded furnaces, you name it, it was nasty. So be careful with those, make sure that those are maintained and you replace the water filters as often as needed, okay? Um, wet media style aren't so bad. There's a bunch of options here that can shut the water off instead of just constantly running. There's bypass, there's power. So there's a lot of options out there for adding humidifiers. Um, highly recommend if you have a scorched air system, it shouldn't be negotiable. This should just be part of your installation and your offer. Do the right thing for the home and add a whole house humidifier. All right, so that wraps up the training on manual RS HVAC by design. It was a series of three pieces or excerpts from a webinar I did for my Patreon members one year ago. If you like these trainings and you want to get them one year in advance, head over to my Patreon page where you can join for as little as $8 a month and get access to the last two years of written blogs and the last year of recorded webinars as part of your monthly membership. Thanks for joining me this week at HVAC Pro Blog where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. I'll see you soon.